Hello everyone, my name is Shima Shatru. I'm business and life empowerment coach, trauma therapist, and uh, the founder and CEO of Infinite Love Coaching and a Holistic Health Resort in Spain. I'm honored to be here today with you to share some uh, effective tools and strategies to prevent and manage burnout. Burnout today is not a joke, it's in a state of emergency. We have over 53% of leaders experiencing burnout according to Harvard studies, 86% of high potential employees are also feeling burnout, 86% of remote workers experiencing burnout in their current position, 70% in person workers report the same feeling, and hybrid workers sit somewhere in the middle about 80%, 81%. So this is really huge numbers. It's not a joke anymore. Before we go through that, I would like to share with you my own experience with burnout and how could I manage that and come out of it. And also sharing with you that it's absolutely okay to be aware of burnout, to be aware, to recognize the signs early, and also to talk about it. When we talk about 86%, this study has been done through 15,000 people. So that means that if we are today here, I don't know how many participants, uh, so well, do we have 100, 400, 400 sign up, I don't know how many are today. So 86% of burnout, that means there is a high chance that some of us are sitting here are right now experiencing burnout, right? So it is important to break the taboo and talk about it and ask for help. So I started my business career when I was 19 years old in a German company. Soon after, as uh, at the same time I was studying and at university, and soon after I had been assigned as their foreign trade director, traveling 180 days a year, expanding the business internationally. That was a lot of responsibilities for 19 years. So I had to learn leadership and um, coaching and psychology, people management and communication skills right at the very young age. This business opportunity brought a lot of knowledge to me, but at the same time challenged my health. When I was 21 years old, and one of that, those normal routine days that I'm working over 11, 12 hours and running from one meeting to another meeting with empty stomach. At 8.30 p.m., I got to a restaurant to have my very first meal of the day, 8.30 p.m. And that was a moment that I felt a strong pain in my uh, belly. And I went to the bathroom and I was my, my stomach was bleeding. So I went to, to the hospital. As a result, I was hospitalized. And they warned me, if I continue with this level of stress, I would definitely won't survive. That was the first time for me becoming familiar of the direct connection of the stress on my head. So the book of Eckhart Tolle, uh, The Power of Now, was gifted to me in this moment by a good friend, dear friend of mine, and really changed my per perception about life. All the worries of the future, all the plans that we have ahead, everything that we are having in our head about the past and not enjoying the present moment and not being fully in here and now. I started to practice mindfulness and meditation right at that age, also participated in yoga classes, but still my lifestyle was pretty busy. So when I was 23 years old, I came for vacation to Marbella. That was the very first time I came to this beautiful heaven on earth. And I remember very well, it was in October and I came from Germany. It was five degrees in Berlin, really cold. When I arrived here, it was 26 degrees. And I was laying down by the pool, reading my poetry books of Rumi. How many of know you know Rumi? Raise your hand, please. Oh, very good. So I was reading the poetry and uh, having the sunrise over my face, I say to myself, I want to live here as long as I'm young. And I have still teeth to enjoy my life. <laughs> so that was the moment I took that bold decision, leaving a career that was very high paid and very well, um, actually, uh, highly, I was very successful and loved my job. I loved my team. I was managing 120 employees and I was extremely happy in that job. But I decided to leave when I'm young still somewhere that is sunny and I have less stress. So I moved six months after to Spain, and soon after I started my own company. 
So I started to become an entrepreneur since then. And a couple of months after I met Salvador, Salvador um, was a true gem. He became like a true father next to me. He became my business partner and helped me to expand my business in Spain and internationally. We got the representative of over 11 Spanish manufacturers for different countries in Middle East and started to offer consultancy services to governmental and um, private entities. I expanded my business in different countries, opened various offices, and everything was growing. But again, I am in the entrepreneur lifestyle now with much more stress because I have employees at my charge. And I have a lot of bills on my table to pay to be paid at the end of the month. And uh, the stress was predominant. In December 2013, Salvador came to the office and he told me that, unfortunately, the doctors gave him only three months to live. Cancer developed all over his body. They couldn't give him any more chemotherapy. And as because he lost one of his kidneys uh, as a result of chemo, and they practically sent him home to die. I was devastated with this news and I have decided to invest uh, in the matter of health and understanding how our body functions and what is actually cancer. I studied deep about the truth behind cancer because conventional treatment was not a choice anymore. So I went deep into holistic ways of treating cancer. The book of Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life, if you haven't read it, definitely take a note. You Can Heal Your Life, really changed my perception about life and about our health and how our body functions. I have learned from this book that we have every, that we are multidimensional beings having multidimensional bodies, mental, physical, emotional, energetic bodies that are interconnected and interfering with each other. And there is an emotional cause related to every disease that we experience. So with cancer specifically, the emotional cause of the cancer is holding grudge and holding resentment. That's like a poison, my dear friend. And I can go to the body and change the pH of the body to acid when the pH goes out of balance. Every type of disease can grow in the body. Unfortunately, with conventional treatments, what we do only is touching and scratching the surface. So we cut the symptoms and we get rid of the symptoms. We never go to the root cause of the disease. So that's that's why um, conventional medicine didn't have any answer for Salvador. That brought a lot of hope in me. I watched tons of interviews of other people who is to heal their stage four cancer. And I sent all this information to Salvador, came up with a protocol on how he can heal his cancer. So he had nothing to lose. He started to give it a try. And I shared the entire protocol in my book in chapter five. Um, that is called, it called the health and the power of forgiveness in, on, on your health. So I would really suggest you to go and have a look called Infinite Love, my journey to better health, relationship and finances, applying a scientific spiritual approach is a number one bestseller in many different categories and countries. And if you are interested, I can share you the link at the end, or you can also look at it, look it up at my, on my website. But now back to the story of Salvador. He applied this protocol. And three months after he come back to the office, much more energetic than ever, six months after he was cancer free. I began to share this information with as many as possible, with around 35 other people with incurable, so-called incurable disease. I have shared this information and all of them um, witnessed great results and recovered their health. So my business and uh, entrepreneur lifestyle didn't allow me to dedicate myself fully to this path until my next wake up call when um, in December 2016, I have been confronting the biggest shock of my life. My mom was in a coma. They have discovered a tumor in her brain. My family in Iran didn't want to worry me. So they put her under the biopsy. They thought it's something really small. They just want to know what it is. And she went as a result to coma. I went got myself to her bed in Tehran and I started to apply quantum healing. That was something that I have learned through my years of studies in quantum physics and quantum treatments. 
And luckily she came out of coma, I started to talk to my family to convince them to not put my mom under aggressive treatments, share with them my story and my success stories of uh, helping so many to heal their incurable disease. And at that stage, my mom, they didn't know even what type of tumor is that. There was no information yet, even, even if this was a cancer, actually. They started right away with that aggressive treatments. And unfortunately, my family didn't believe in me. They showed great resistance. I don't blame them. They wanted the best for my mother. But I had to sit down and witness the death of my mom. She underwent six brain surgery, one, uh, two months of radiotherapy, and a year and a half after, she wasn't anymore between us. That ignited the fire in me to share this information with as many as possible and integrate it in my coaching business. So when I came back to Spain, I founded in February 2017 the Infinite Love Coaching Academy, which is a part of the Infinite Love Project and Infinite Love Holistic Health Resort. And since then, I brought together a team of 25 therapists holistic health, uh, in, in holistic health and also conventional medical doctors who do the holistic healing as well. They combine it with coaches and psychotherapists and created infinite love. And every month I am committed to offer one free seminar or webinar as part of my contribution to the world. And all my expectation from this is to give. Uh, now, my story with, um, with the burnout, after all these years of starting to share all this stuff with people and applying it myself in my life, doing meditation, yoga, qigong, every day having routines and all this stuff, I experienced a true burnout in a different way that it was very hard to get out of it when I gave birth to my first child. So it was a tough pregnancy experience and after birth, being a mompreneur, having many businesses running it and remotely not being next to my family, it was really difficult without having help and support of my family. And um, yes, so I went through so much stress that I wasn't aware of it. I, well, I, knew, I knew that I'm under stress because I couldn't sleep and the sleep was directly related to the child, to the newborn who doesn't, doesn't sleep much and ask a lot because they need to be fed constantly. But at the same time, this was influencing my life, my day life. And I carry on with my businesses, not giving myself enough time for recovery. So what happened that when my uh, when my daughter turned uh, 18 months, uh, she started at kindergarten. And soon after, she got extremely ill. Every couple of days she was at kindergarten, she would come back with new viruses. And because our immunity was really oppressed because of lack of sleep and amount of work, we would get ill as well. And that continued for a couple of months. In these months, I'm having a lot of global seminars, webinars, workshops, and, um, and retreats. And the biggest one was a yoga festival that we have organized here in Marbella, 5,000 people attended. And the day that I am going for my seminar to the, to the festival, my body collapsed. So I woke up in the morning, I couldn't move the bed, I was completely collapsed. And I'm used to actually put some makeup and get myself there. I have been running so many seminars, even with 40 degree fever, I get myself there because I don't want to put others down or cancel last minute. But this one was impossible. So I asked one of the therapists in my team who does um, energy medicine to do a session for me at 6 a.m. And he's amazing. He's one of the best, actually. And he did energy medicine. And I was really sure that after that session, I can get myself to go to the seminar. I stepped down of bed after that, and I fall over the floor. There was no way I could move a finger. And that moment, I knew I'm in deep, deep trouble. So I had to cancel my uh, seminar and all the work that I have done six months to get to all the realization when completely vanished. 
And um, the week after I had another retreat, upcoming retreat, I had other people flying over from other countries to participate. I had to cancel that. And two months after, I had planned a huge uh, project, 1,400 participants, Holistic Health Renaissance with top-notch speakers in the world in a castle near Vienna. And unfortunately, I knew that I had to cancel that complete event as well. I was the founder of the event, so I was not just somebody who is collaborating. It was not easy to delegate it. The whole mission and vision and everything was founded by me. So I have asked my partners if they want to go ahead with it. And they said, no, without me, we have to cancel everything. Then I realized that I put too much on my table. I took too much responsibility. The reason is that I love my job so much that I can sometimes control myself. So the reason is just, is not because you go to work based up need, it's not because you hate your job and it's bringing you a lot of uh, exhaustion. No, that was the other way. I love it so much that I put myself under so much commitment, not considering the prolonged stress in my body. So what I have learned, I'm going to share with you right here. I have learned that first, stress is underlying factor of disease. So we have 90%, we have studies showing over 90% of disease are directly related to stress. Only 3% of people receive stress management help. Everything from dementia, heart uh, disease, um, stroke, or I don't know, cancer, anything that you can call insomnia, all of them are directly linked to stress then why we don't attend it? Why we just look at it when it's too late and why we don't have it in our system? Why in our medical system we don't care? Why did we separate these two from each other? The mental, we have separated mental care with the physical care. Why? These are two interconnected, they are one. Mental, emotional, physical, energetic are one. So, my suggestion, my dear friend, learn stress management technique, especially in today's fast-paced world. In 2024, everything is going to change. We have already the launch of the new currency that is going to be replaced with your paper money. It's a new thing. I don't say it's bad or it's good. It's a completely new, new matter. And until you get used to that, it can cause a lot of stress. So we should be aware of it. And uh, development, the fast development of AI, a lot of insecurities out there in the people's heart that they are insecure of losing their, their jobs. And this stress will be accumulated to the stress that everybody experienced during the pandemic and during the lockdown. So it's the time to build resilience, learn techniques to manage your stress and build resilience. Meditation, yoga, qigong or qigong, mindfulness, spending time in nature, practicing the sport, uh, having a healthy diet, all of them help, but until a certain point. Because what I have experienced with my recent burnout that I just shared with you, I was doing all these tips, but I have experienced a burnout. The third point is to listen to your body before it's too late. And that's what I haven't done. So I was constantly exhausted. I didn't sleep very well in the night because of my child having fever or waking up several times and not having a good night's sleep. And during the day, I overloaded myself because of the stress that was prolonged in my body and I haven't listened to my body. This actually happened and my point and my tip for you, my dear friend, is to listen to your body, be present with your body, love yourself, look after yourself because before your body forces you to do so. Okay? So now we are going to do an exercise, and I would like you to take a pen and paper or write it in your notepad. 
In what areas in your life have you experienced stress in the past six months? I will write it down with you as well. Okay. Just write some areas, for instance, business, work, relationship, finances, or whatever. Have you experienced stress in the past six months? So how do you cope with the stress, my dear? Please list your top three coping me mechanism. Okay. Now, 10 indications of unhealthy coping mechanism. So how do you know that your coping mechanism is not working for you? You, you need to have something to compare with. So let's have a look at this list. And if you have any of these issues, then you need to become aware that your coping mechanism is not helping you. One, sleep problems. Today, more than ever, people are complaining of sleep issues. Many people are complaining waking up at 3 a.m. How many of you wake up around 3 a.m.? Please raise your hand. And how many of you have difficulties to go to bed? How many of you need to watch something before you sleep? Raise your hand. These are all because of not being able to just switch off and go to bed. Second, body pain, headaches. Tightness in the neck and shoulder. If you're experiencing that, it's just because of an uh, excessive level of stress in your body. Three is eating when you're not hungry. So emotional eating. I'm guilty in that as well. <laughs> when I'm not hungry, when I'm stressed, I eat as well. And that's not a good healthy, uh, healthy mechanism, right? Or overeating. Procrastination. Procrastination is one of the most common ones. How many of you procrastinate? Like you want to go and do a task that is super important, but then you start to clean your table and do something else. Excessive body diversions, excessive workout, excessive sex, excessive running. Now, all that workout is good, everything, sex is good, running is good, but if you do excessive, that's, that's a sign of stress in your body. Crying for no reason as at all. This is definitely a sign of depression. The stress and the emotion hasn't been expressed, means has been depressed, and that is the meaning of depression. So you need to find healthy ways to express it, express your feelings, express your emotions. Feeling depressed, emotionally numb. Disproportional anger or negativity, like people that they just are like burning fire for no reason at all. They can go from zero to 100 in a matter of a second. For no reason at all. How many of you recognize that? Substances, alcohol, smoking, or uh, what using different substances to calm down. So none of them are healthy. So what is healthy then? Okay, so let's have a look as a scientifically proven method to build resilience. This method is called heart coherence. And it has been provided by Heart Mass Institute, an institute for research of heart intelligence in the state. That's a place where I have studied heart intelligence. And you can read more about it in three chapters shared in my book, Power of Heart. And also uh, on their official website, heartmath.org, that there is a simple technique that we have scientific studies, published scientific study that shows how this simple step, two minutes step, two minutes technique can change and shift your level of stress and have a lot of health benefits for you. Before we are going to practice, I'm going to share with you the health benefits of the heart coherence. So if you look at this picture, the communication between heart and the brain in the right side of this is coherent. And the communication between heart and brain in the left side of the picture, in the red one, is incoherent. Incoherent heart and brain communication causes a lot of disease, and coherent communication releases healing enzyme in our body. 
So when we manage to create high cohort coherence, we can have, these are only some of the benefits. The entire list of the benefits has been published in my book, but just look at some of the benefits. One, better stress and anxiety management. That's exactly the topic of today's talk. Second, emotional rebalancing. Third, immune system reinforcement. Four, reduction of sleep disorders, risk of depression and burnout. So that's a scientific proven way. If you really want to reduce the risk of burnout, practice heart coherence. Fifth, reduction of high blood pressure. Sixth, regain of tonus and energy and reduction of chronic fatigue. Seventh, improvement of concentration and memorization capacity. And eight, increased life expectancy. Okay, so if you're ready, we are going to practice together the heart coherence. Sit back, relax, and close your eyes. Bring your awareness to the area of your heart by placing your hand over your heart. Inhale deeply and exhale fully. Slow down your breathing rhythm by simply commanding, slow down, slow down. Inhale for a count of five, and exhale for a count of five. Inhale, Two, three, four, five. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. Inhale. Two, three, four, five. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. One more time. Inhale. Five, exhale, five. At this moment, create a feeling of appreciation in your heart. Say thanks to your heart that is beating for you 24-7 without any rest and without any expectations. Allow this beautiful feeling of gratitude to expand all over your heart. And with the next inhalation, allow this loving energy gratitude and appreciation to fill up your chest. Open your heart a bit more and send this loving energy to every corner of your body. Send this gratitude to your head, to your eyes, your nose, your lips, your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, your hands, your chest, your stomach, your legs, your knees, your feet. And as you breathe deeply and slowly, Feel gratitude with every cell of your body. With the next inhalation, allow this beautiful loving energy 
to expand all around you, fill up the space around your body with your loving appreciation and gratitude. The next inhalation, allow this loving energy to travel even further to fill up your entire home or office wherever you are sitting. And going even further to fill up your entire city. Your country. Today we are connecting from 106 different countries around the globe. Let's send this loving energy to each other in 106 countries in the world. As you breathe deeply and slowly. Allow this loving gratitude to travel even further to cover our entire beautiful planet. See everyone is receiving your gratitude in their heart with a beautiful smile on their face. They send you their loving appreciation back to your heart. Take a deep breath and receive this loving energy in your heart. With a beautiful smile on your face, you can open your heart whenever you are ready. Namaste. So the technique of heart coherence is very simple. There are only three simple steps. First, bring your awareness to your heart by placing your hand over your chest area. Second, slow down your breathing rhythm. You can command this to your body by just simply saying slow down or, or by counting down your breath, inhaling for a count of five and exhaling for a count of five. The third step is to create a heartfelt emotion such as gratitude, appreciation, compassion, care, or love. Only in these three steps that all together take around one to two minutes, you create and you achieve heart coherence. Now today in our practice, we take it to a further step and we allow this loving gratitude to travel to the entire world and create coherence in our planet. So that's a very powerful technique that help you to add up to the peace in our planet. We have scientific studies, over 200 scientific studies published in 30 different countries in 600 universities talking about the power of meditation and creating coherent intention in global peace. If you want to have more information, I invite you to read chapter 9 of my book and all the scientific links and researches are um, provided there. You can also read this information on the official website of heartmath.org. 
So I hope you enjoyed our session today. And I hope this uh, technique will find its place to your life. You will take the time to practice it. It's very simple, so we don't have any excuse to not using it. And it's a beautiful technique. It brings immediate sensation of peace and relaxation to our hearts and to our bodies. And if you just <clears throat> start your day every day when you wake up, for two to three minutes, bringing your aver uh, awareness to your heart and create a heart coherence, uh, you are adding up a lot uh, to your personal health, uh, social health, and also global well-being. And I recommend to do this right in the morning when you wake up or at least have an attitude of gratitude and appreciation when you wake up in the morning because that can change everything. And throughout the day, whenever you go through different meetings and stressful situations or between the meetings, you can just take two minutes to practice heart coherence and you will see an extreme shift in your life. I would like to hear the results. Please share your comments with me and I'm more than happy to be here and support you on this process. As I said, we are facing um, a lot of um, changes in our world, a time of extreme changes, and that can bring a lot of environmental stress apart of all the other stresses that we may experience in our life. So it is important to build resilient, to avoid burnout. And if you are one who experienced burnout already, definitely to heal or to not go back there, practice these methodologies and feel free to contact us through the website shimashadu.com and uh, reach out and we are here, uh, very happy to help you. As part of our gratitude and appreciation and contribution, we are offering five free coaching sessions to five candidates. So please send us your inquiry to shima at infinitelove.es or to contact at shimashatu.com or simply send me a message on Internation. And uh, we will schedule your session. Also, uh, we have a program specifically designed for leadership and burnout. It's a group coaching program, consists of six months program, two group coachings of 90 minutes per month. So very easy to schedule in your daily uh, busy uh, time and agenda. And um, it's highly beneficial. We are seeing great results and really transformation in the life of people that we are working with. Please feel free to check out that program as well. I will leave the link here. And any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are very happy to be here and to support you. And together, we can make a difference. Many love, light, and blessing to all of you. Thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you for your precious time that you shared with us. Thank you.